I was extremely excited when I heard that Sega and Game Freak were teaming up again to create another game. The last game they made together was Pulseman for the Mega Drive, and that's one of my favourites. So when Tembo stomped onto the scene, you can imagine what was running through my head. I got the game in a moment it slam dunked onto Steam, and I haven't looked back. There is so much in Tembo that just tickles my every fancy when it comes to a platformer. And in fact, I say that's because of its very different elements. I'd even go as far to say this is one of the more unique platforming games that's come out in recent years. The first thing I've got to say is the story. Now I'm one of those people who prefers a simple story when it comes to games like this, and yes, it is super simple. Tembo is on holiday when Shell City gets attacked by a silent villain who goes by the name of Phantom. Tembo gets called up to fight once again, and there you go. I absolutely adore the art direction of this game. It's like a mix between comic book and chrome sketch work. On top of that, the only elements in the game that are 2D is Tembo. Everything else you interact with is 3D. Normally this is a risky move and makes most games look ugly. It pulls it off. Maybe it's because the 3D elements are also cell shaded. Part of me feels like it's an optical illusion, and because I'm concentrating on the game, I just don't have time to focus on the visual appeal. So I'm a little head scratchy on how the visual appeal makes me feel. But hey, it makes me smile, so that's gotta be good. The music is something that just fits the bill. Just an awesome mix of heroic in action that suits every theme, and I just love it. So many spine tingling moments while playing all thanks to the soundtrack. There really isn't much I can say about this other than it kicks ass. Now then, the gameplay. This is rare when I say this. There is no problems with the controls, or what they ask from you to continue with the game. Everything is spot on perfect. Tempo's default moving is slow, but, but it is very much needed later on, trust me. This isn't Sonic where you've gotta go fast. Although he does have a dash move that is oh so fun to use. I did often get carried away because I felt invincible whilst dashing. His jump arc is floaty, but again, it's needed later. So some parts of the game you just need a little extra hang time. But for whatever reason you need a little more hang time, you can always hold down the jump button for a little more jump. For people who have played Yoshi's Island, this will feel very at home. His attacks do vary. As I said before with his dash move to plow for objects and obstacles, an up attack for getting bad guys that are just out of reach, and a jump attack for a cannonball move, which is super powerful, but risky. I often throw myself off ledges with this move, so use it wisely, and only when needed. It's not a cannonball to win, get that out of your head. He also has a water spray move, used for putting out fires and disabling enemies for a time. This water move comes in very handy at some point, and you will thank it later on, I promise you. Once taught how to play, you are planted right into the mix. Shell City is under serious need of help, and this is what you have to do. First order of business is to take out all of the Phantom Troopers. Take out as many as you can, because you need to defeat a certain number to progress to the next area, and you can do this in oh so many ways. Using the moves you have just learnt can really hurt the Phantom Forces, with a little imagination. Also, there are 10 civilians in each of the stages to rescue. It isn't needed to save them, but if you like to complete games 100%, then keep your eye out for them. Plus, sometimes they are really hidden. I guarantee you will have to replay some of the levels to find them all. Plus, once you've saved them, they ride on your back. Just brilliant. All of these things in your mind, you also have to finish the stage by finding the phantom statue and destroying it. Destroying this statue will finish the stage. When you have taken out enough phantom troopers in each stage and area, you can progress into a phantom dome. Inside these domes is a brand new challenge, retaining everything you've learnt about the game so far, plus some new stuff too. I managed to slip up many times in these domes, they can be very tricky. When you pass the dome stage, you fight a boss. Again, this boss will challenge everything you've learnt so far in your adventure. So keep that in mind when fighting it, it'll make it much easier. And I gotta mention, these bosses do kick a lot of ass. I really love the design of them, and just how classic they feel. It's hard to describe, but playing this game makes me miss playing my 16-bit Mega Drive quite a lot. 
It's hard to explain if you've never played those kinds of games, but trust me, the, the heart and the soul of that time is in this. Tembo the Badass Elephant. It is so rare that we get a game with such a title that lives up to its own name. Games like this should come a lot more often than they should. These games are proof that the classic style of gameplay can still live today in a modern era. With a little imagination, anything with the classic game style can survive, and it is also proof that a character like Tembo still has a place in the gaming culture. I mean, come on, look at what's been coming in these recent years. Shovel Knight, Ukulele, Mighty Number no. 9, and now Tembo. I think I can say with full confidence that these style of games and characters just aren't going to go anywhere. In fact, I'd say they're on the uprise. The classic era is making a comeback, and I stake everything I have on it. Thank you for watching this video, and if you want to watch a past episode, then click the big box, because bleh. And if you're bored with this channel, then check out these guys. Nico CW, Cyrasa, and NRG Gamespace. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.